In 1945, Hitler and the Nazis experimented on people with special abilities to create a super army. Even after the war ended, other countries, driven by the Cold War, formed their own divisions to explore and weaponize psychic powers. There are nine types of abilities. Watchers can see the future in quick flashes, but it's a visual skill with its weaknesses. Movers, who can use their minds to move things and people. Pushers, who can make others believe things by pushing thoughts into their minds and needing eye contact. Bleeders, who unleash destructive sonic screams. Stitches, which can manipulate human tissues. Sniffs, who can trace an object's history. Wipers, who can erase memories. Shifters, who can make things look different. And shadows, who can block other clairvoyance. Hello, welcome to I Am Movies. Today, we're diving into the 2009 sci-fi movie known as Push. But before we jump into the details, make sure to show us some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Now, let's get right into it. The movie begins with a boy named Nick Gant talking with his dad, Jonah Gant, who has the ability to push. He knows that someone is following them, so Jonah tells Nick an important message. He tells him that one day a girl will give him a flower, and he has to help her at all costs. Nick is confused, but his dad just apologizes and tells him he will understand it when he grows up, calling him special, and Jonah hugs Nick and telekinetically pushes him through the wall. Agents rush in and capture Jonah. The head agent, Henry Carver, arrives, and a powerful force throws Jonah's body out of the room. Carver dismisses it as a waste and orders the body to be prepared for dissection. The story then shifts after many years. In a place run by the U.S. Division, an experiment is happening. A girl named Kira Hudson is getting injected with a special serum. Carver, who looks a bit worried, watches Kira. Meanwhile, a woman in a patient's gown drops a glass marble and starts moving it through the facility. Meanwhile, Kira seems to stop breathing, but just when they think she's gone, her heart starts again. She quickly breaks free, running out of the facility while Carver watches, amazed. Carver yells for her to stop, but she doesn't listen. Kira dodges security stuff, and we also see the marble rolling and bouncing in a tricky way hitting doors and walls just right. Kira gets to an exit where the door is closing, but the dropped marble rolls into place at just the perfect moment, keeping it open. She escapes while Carver and his right-hand agent Victor, who's a pusher, talks about how Kira is the first person to survive the injection. They decide they need to bring her back fast. Carver tells all the watchers and sniffers in the country to be on high alert. Later on, we find Nick, all grown up, waking up in his apartment in Hong Kong. After some warm-up moves with his fingers and a bit of practice, he tries his hand at making dice land the way he wants. Once satisfied, he heads to the park for a bit of betting. Unfortunately, luck isn't on his side, and he loses. The last dice doesn't behave properly, and he ends up owing $6,000 on the small scary guy. To make matters worse, he gets a bloody nose while escaping. As Nick is about to enter his apartment, two agents named Mack and Holden, sniffers from Division, show up. They reveal that many Americans with power are in Hong Kong to avoid Division. They casually go through his apartment, touching and smelling things to figure out where he's been and if he's seen the girl they are looking for. After confirming he hasn't, they warn him not to try anything foolish. Nick considers using the guns in his drawer but decides against it. The agents leave, and Nick starts packing to escape when the phone rings. Answering it, he's told to let her in and put down the gun. Just then, someone knocks on the door. Nick opens it, gun in hand, and it's Cassie Holmes, a 13-year-old girl who is a watcher. She lets herself in, and Nick tries to bring her outside but she closes the door and explains they need to find a case that could earn them about six million dollars, enough to clear Nick's debts. Nick is easily convinced as he needs the money. Cassie decides to grab some food while they talk. She then reveals that she's a second generation watcher and uses a sketchbook that once belonged to her mother, who is now captured by the division. She admits there's no actual money in the case, but it's the girl they need to find before the division finds her, she mentioned. Feeling deceived, Nick tries to walk away, but their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of the Pop family, Two Bleeder, and their sister Pop Girl, who's a watcher just like Cassie. A wild chase through the market ensues. The Bleeders use their power to shatter tanks, and Nick and Cassie run ahead of the breaking glass. Eventually, they are caught by the sound and fall to the ground. Nick unexpectedly uses his power to move Cassie away from danger. The Pop Girl has a vision of Kira fading away, so she stops her brothers from killing Nick, explaining that if they do, they lose finding Kira. The Pops leave, leaving Nick bleeding from his ears on the market floor. Meanwhile, Kira wakes up on a boat near the docks. She discovers a mirror with numbers and a name of Nick written on it. Finding a lipstick container and a key, she writes Nick on the mirror revealing that she wrote the note herself. Later on in the city, Cassie is sketching a doorway and somehow draws her way to Nick. Following the sketch, she finds Nick, who is being tended to by a stitch named Teresa. Teresa, with a lot of sneering remarks about Cassie's mother being captured, and Cassie's supposedly lesser talent, looks down on them. 
Teresa skillfully fixes Nick's injuries, warning them not to mess with the division before leaving. Cassie wakes Nick up and hands him a flower she picked from the lobby, convincing him to help her. During this, there's a sudden flash to a shot of a patient in a division hospital hallway dropping the glass marble that freed Kira. It's implied that this was Cassie's mother, the greatest watcher division has ever seen. Then she reveals her latest sketch, both of them dead. Cassie also mentions that even though she can see the future, it's always changing, and knowing it can alter it. Meanwhile, Kira is strolling down a sidewalk when Mac and Holden catch up to her. They grab her at gunpoint, planning to take her back to division headquarters. Kira, determined to escape, starts trying to use her push ability on Mac as he turns to taunt her. Angrily, he orders her to stop, claiming she needs to use the bathroom. Reluctantly, the agents stop at a restaurant. While Holden gets a coffee, Mac takes Kira to the bathroom. There, she cleverly makes eye contact with Mac through the crack in the stall door and his reflection in the mirror. Using her push ability, she makes him believe that Holden killed his non-existent brother. Furious, Mac storms out of the bathroom and shoots Holden, causing chaos in the restaurant. Realizing his error, Mac returns to the bathroom, where Kira surprises him with her well-trained fighting skills. She overpowers him, steals the car keys, and sets off on her own back into the city. In the nighttime, Carver and Victor drive with Mac in the back seat. Mac, trying to explain himself, justifies the killing of Harold. Carver decides Mac is off the team and uses his power to make Mac believe his gun is unloaded and instructs him to put it in his mouth and pull the trigger. Carver and Victor move on, leaving Mac's body in the alley. Meanwhile, Nick and Cassie are in a taxi, and Nick recognizes a drawing in Cassie's book as the logo for a club he knows. They head to the club and find an ex-agent slash shifter named Hook Waters. Hook entertains the girls with his shifting ability, doing card tricks. Nick and Cassie sit down and discuss their mission. Hook informs them about a sniffer named Emily and gives them her address. They also tell him about the bead, and Hook uses his shifting ability to make an earring match Cassie's description. After that, they bring it to Emily just as she finishes her client. Initially hesitant, Emily takes the bead and shows them an identical one she received. These beads broke off Kira's bracelet during her fight with Mac in the restaurant restroom, and they have been distributed to sniffers across the country. Emily sniffs the bead and directs Nick and Cassie to the Kuun Tong Pier, where Kira is attempting to get a ride. Hearing Cassie and Nick arriving, Kira starts shooting at them. Nick recognizes her as his ex-girlfriend from Coney Island. Nick learns that she doesn't remember much, suspecting that her memory was wiped to evade Division's watchers. Kira, however, slowly retains memories of Nick. As they argue, Cassie, with a concerned look, quickly scribbles and pales. She pulls Nick aside, revealing that adding Kira to the picture has added another death to her drawing, which is her mom. She never saw her mom's death before, and now she is scared. Despite this revelation, Nick is unwilling to abandon Kira. He compromises by calling up an old friend named Pinky, a shadow. Sniffs will no longer find Kira as long as she stays 20 feet next to Pinky. They go to a hotel and get a room to wait for Kira to gain her memory so they can find the case. Cassie then heads to a street vendor outside, claiming she's thirsty. Pinky notices Nick's glances through the not-quite-shut door, understanding the situation so he sits outside the hall. Meanwhile, Kira uses her push ability to make Nick believe the bathroom is on fire to get him in there, leading to an intimate moment. Outside, Cassie encounters Pop Girl, who taunts her, claiming the shadow won't work for long, and that she knows how Cassie will die referencing the tiger she keeps drawing. Trying to remain composed, Cassie drinks the bottle of liquor she got as soon as Pop Girl leaves. Later, everyone is in the room when Cassie stumbles in, completely drunk, suggesting they should just abandon Kira to save themselves from danger before collapsing into a chair and falling asleep. In the morning, Cassie is abruptly awakened by the sense that Pop Girl is tracking them down. The Pops burst into the hotel room only to find it empty. On the streets below, Nick instructs they split. Kira will go with Pinky, while Nick and Cassie go elsewhere, while he attempts to create a better future by confronting Carver. In the restaurant, instead of a violent confrontation, Carver talks Nick down and shares details about the effects of the drugs division uses. He tells Nick that Kira will die if she doesn't get the proper treatment, and only he can help her. Victor takes advantage of the momentary distraction, initiating a telekinetic gunfight. Cassie, drawing outside, manages to divert Carver's attention from Nick. They talk, and Cassie urges Carver not to harm her and Nick, highlighting the risk of losing Kira if they kill Nick. Nick and Victor's fight escalates, resulting in Nick being thrown against the ceiling. Carver then stops Victor, and they leave. After that, Nick and Cassie meet Pinky and Kira at another hotel. Cassie then draws herself, holding Kira's shoe. Upon examining it, she finds a key taped to the inside with the same number written on the mirror earlier. Kira's worsening condition becomes evident. They all go to Emily's place, and Emily sniffs the key and also brings in Hook for help. They discover a shadow stronger than anything they've encountered. Cassie, realizing she can't draw something that's shadowed, sketches the skyline from their hotel. One building is missing, 
the one they need to find. As they question Kira about the case, she reveals it contains a drug to enhance their powers. However, Pop Girl's ability to track their every move poses a significant obstacle. Recognizing that Pop Girl can see every decision they make in advance, Nick devises a plan. He will write instructions to each member in Red New Year's envelopes, specifying when to open them for instructions. He'll then visit the Wiper who erased Kira's memory to erase the memory of writing the instructions, ensuring the group is unaware of the plan until moments before each action. Nick starts writing the letters while Cassie sketches the details of the case and the drug-filled syringe. Meanwhile, Pop Girl happily sketches the same syringe in the background while her father and his associates conduct business. That night, they start the plan and Nick puts Kira in a cab with Pinky, instructing her to open the envelope when she starts doubting the truth. After a while, Carver and Victor wait as Pinky arrives, handing over a sick and weakened Kira. Before Pinky leaves, Victor gives Pinky the exchange money. After that, he opens the red envelopes that Nick gave him and follows the instructions. He then meets Nick and gives him the exchange money. He heads to the docks to find the old man who is a wiper. Nick uses the money and pays the man to wipe the last two hours from his memory and instructs the wiper to give him the red envelope afterward. As the procedure occurs, Pop Girl stops sketching, stunned. She admits to her father that she lost the connection, and he scolds her, expressing his disappointment. Meanwhile, Hook, equipped with shifted credentials, passes security and reaches the top floor of the shadowed building. There, he finds a locker where the key is, and he opens it, taking the case they were looking for. Hook brings the case back to Cassie and Emily, disguising an identical plain red suitcase to look like the real one. Cassie takes the case and leaves the room. On the boat, Nick wakes up and reads a note from his red envelope instructing him to go home. He does so and finds the case on his bed. As he attempts to open it, Teresa crushes her bone with one touch from behind, leaving him paralyzed. Teresa opens the case and finds the syringe inside. She then opened the door and gave it to the Pop Brothers, leaving her with a bag of money. Nick then saw a drawing made by Cassie pointing a gun under his bed. Nick then threatened Teresa by pointing the gun using his telekinesis, forcing her to heal him. The Pop Brothers return with the case. Once they present it to their father, the syringe shifts to a bottle of soy sauce and the case turns red. Enraged, he mobilized his troops to confront the division. Once healed, Nick meets with Cassie leaving Teresa tied up. Cassie expresses her frustration with only being able to draw pictures of a tiger and her fear of death. Nick comforts her, suggesting she can escape everything by going in a straight line without making decisions the Watchers can track. Cassie leaves, heading into the subway, making random turns to avoid Watcher detection. Pop Girl, however, sketches the scene and circles the sign indicating Cassie's direction. Meanwhile, Kira, in a hotel room with Carver and Victor, questions their motives. Carver reveals she volunteered for the division, and he had been her partner undercover. However, when she volunteered for the drug injection, something went wrong, causing her to neutralize anyone in her way. Back with Cassie, she finds herself in the attic of a Chinese restaurant, realizing she made a mistake when she sees a tiger logo. Turning around, she encounters Pop Girl with a gun. Suddenly, hands with long fingernails appear on either side of her head. We witness Pop Girl's shocked expression as her memory is wiped by the same old man who wiped Nick. Looking at the picture again, she sees Pop Girl unconscious in the same position as a girl in her sketchbook, with a tiger logo standing over her. Meanwhile, we find Nick walking through a hallway. Upon entering the room, Nick is surprised to find Kira looking healthy and dressed as an agent. She claims they've never been to Coney Island together and only met yesterday. Nick is cuffed and put into a trunk, being transported to the case's location. The three agents arrive at the locker, and Victor tears the door off, revealing the case inside. As Carver takes it out, a large group of Chinese gangsters, including the Pop family, appears. A chaotic fight breaks out between the agents with powers and the armed gangsters. Body flying everywhere and one falls down to a car where Nick is kept. He comes out and looks for Kira. Carver deals with the bleeders, Kira uses her push ability to synchronize gunfire, and Victor deflects bullets and laser sights. After that, Nick confronts Victor and finally beats him with a powerful punch. Carver approaches Kira, who turns her pushed battalion toward him. He reminds her they are on the same side, marveling at the extent of her powers under the drug's influence. Nick arrives and tries to convince Kira that her memory is a push. Carver gets a hold of Nick and tries to do a push on his mind, but he swiftly avoids it and takes the syringe. He tries threatening that he will inject himself the last serum. Despite all of that Kira is still controlled, Nick injects the serum and appears to die. Carver then leaves with Kira. Later, Cassie approaches Nick's body, holding an umbrella to shield him from the dripping water. She helps him up, and they retrieve the real case from a dumpster nearby. Nick, curious about the injected substance, learns it's just a soy sauce. Nick realizes they now possess something Division desperately wants, giving them an advantage in the fight against Division. Nick asks Cassie how long her mother has been planning this, and she reveals, 
probably since before Cassie was born, it becomes clear that Cassie's mother orchestrated the entire plan, allowing herself to be captured to position herself inside the division at the right time, foreseeing and maneuvering the entire plot. While on a private plane to the US, Carver is sleeping, and Kira, going through her purse, discovers a red envelope containing a photograph that validates her genuine relationship with Nick. The message instructs her to eliminate Carver. With this revelation, Kira uses her push ability to compel Carver to shoot himself, and the movie ends. If you'd like to see us recap any other movies or topics you have in mind, just drop a comment and let us know. And don't forget to hit the like button, share this recap, and subscribe to stay updated for the next one. Until next time.